Hello everybody, what is up? Cobra Axis and Allies here. Now today I have a custom game, and this is going to be a gameplay series for you guys, uh, or it just might just be one video probably, uh, since this is a smaller game. But basically I got bored this morning and decided to make this map right here. Um, and uh, you can see that it's a pretty decent map, I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, it's not perfect, but you know, just for a fun little game just to play uh, tonight. So yeah, basically... This first little installment is just going to be the background of this. Uh, basically, this island, or two islands, is supposed to represent Heligoland Bight, which was an island off the coast of Germany during World War I. And basically, this island, or archipelago, was heavily fortified by the Germans uh, as like a fortress island, almost like a Gibraltar. And the strategic importance of this place was the fact that it was super heavily fortified, and since it was right off the coast of Germany, or you know, a few uh, hundred miles, basically was able to protect, like, the Kiel Canal, the uh, coast of Kiel, and also the somewhat, to some degree, the uh, Danish Straits. So it was a pretty vital uh, location, and basically, during the war, there is some significance to the islands, because off in the North Sea, which would have been over here, there was a battle of Heligoland Bight, and that was because this island also served as a major naval base, and that is represented, as you can see right there. And basically, the British wanted to draw out the surface forces that were based out of here into a battle and then defeat them, which they ended up doing. But I had this idea based on an uh, actual Battlefield 1 video game map called Heligoland Bight, where basically it pits the British invading the actual island, which does kind of make sense. You would think that because of their huge naval force and everything, and maybe early in the war, the British may have tried to invade this place just because it would have knocked off a really major strategic German stronghold. Um, so, yeah. Now we'll just go into some little quick details of the game. So as you can see, it's made of just four sheets of paper that I got printed out. Um, we've got some little information down here of the different units. Uh, it's supposed to be played with a D12 system, so you see we've got destroyers, um, with a basically different little information so it can attack four, defend at four, and it moves three. Um, TP means torpedoes, so that's basically um, all ships have a first strike, or most ships have a first strike ability. So basically it, the destroyers can shoot at a two for the first round of combat, and that's their torpedoes, and if they get a hit, then the craft that they're shooting at is destroyed. Um, Destroyers have a range of one, which means that they, you know, if there's a destroyer here, he moves into here to shoot at another ship. Now, next we have cruisers, uh, and you can see their stats there. They also have torpedoes. They have a range of two, which basically means that if they're sitting here, they can shoot one, two, so a ship over here can get shot at by a cruiser. Um, next up for ships, we have the battle cruiser, which the British field. Um, these are pretty decent ships. They move three. They have a long range, so they're pretty decent, as I just said. And then we got uh, battleships, which Germany is the only one. They start with one battleship. And um, basically, that's kind of like your normal battleship from Global War. Two hits. It does have a first strike. That basically represents its really powerful guns. So it can kind of get a devastating blow and blow up a ship in one shot, if you're lucky. And it has a range of five, which means that this thing could, say, park here and shoot one, two, three, four, five. So basically, the thing can shoot across the map if it really needs to. And then finally, the British are bringing in some submarines. So you can see we've got some submarine stats. They have a pretty good torpedo strike attack, but a small range, um, like a destroyer. Then we've got the setup, which... Um, Basically, each force starts at these little markers here, so uh, basically these guys are we're pretending that they're in this square so they can move on their turn. So the Germans over here start with one battleship, 13 destroyers, and also that's another thing, all, all the ships are one-to-one. -one. The only additional ship that I've added is the battleship, just for a little bit of extra balance. I, I would think in this situation, if the British were launching a full-scale invasion, the Germans would try to scrounge together something to send in. Up here we have the more historic force that was at Heligoland Bight, which was the light cruiser force that the Germans were packing and their uh, smaller destroyer flotilla. Now, 
Some of the ships that I have to use are other nations, so these black destroyers are actually Russian, but in this game they represent Germans. And finally, we've got some Germans that start on the map, which is another de destroyer and torpedo boat flotilla. They're the same ships, and uh, they start here at the actual docks. For the British, all their forces start up here, and based on those numbers, you can see that their navy is quite massive. Now, the British are definitely the strongest naval power in this little mini game, uh, but they don't. Now, these may look like battleships, but they are supposed to represent battle cruisers, so these don't take like two hits or anything. And like I said, they're outgunned by a battleship. Um, but the British have the objective of capturing the island, and as you can see here, We've got these two transports, which are designated. You can see that what they are carrying. One transport carries 15 infantry, and the other transport carries, I think it's eight artillery and a tank and an armored car. So that's their heavy equipment uh, transport. So the British can shoot up the German Navy as much as they want, but that won't complete their major objective, which is to win this game. So as you can see here, we've got the actual island of Heligoland. Now, the... here, let's move this guy because that is blocking an important feature. Now, as you can see that you've got green and you've got tan. Now, tan... basically the island of Heligoland was on a huge rocky cliff that was about 50 feet or higher out of the... Uh, out, of, out of sea level. So there was only certain places that you could actually get up to the highlands up here, which you can see are pretty heavily defended with these uh, coastal artillery guns. So, there are only two points of entry for the British to actually get up onto the highlands if they wish to silence those guns and get to the central command base, which is right here. Now, that is this beach right here, this landing, which basically the British would have to land on that beach and then start pushing in. And also down here at the docks, you can see that we've got the city here, four city territories, but it's kind of split. These cities are on the tan zone where you can actually land. These cities are up here in the green, and you can see that there's only one space right there to get into the highlands, so that you're going to have to push into this city and then past that. So definitely pretty strong, and this whole dock facility here with these really strong fortress guns are basically easily invadable, or kind of, you know, like they do have the fortress guns and everything. And then you can see that this island called Dune Island is a, a lower island, so it can be invaded from all sides, but you can see that it is a little bit more heavily fortified with three fortress guns. Um, and then getting into the stats, just to kind of finish out, infantry and artillery are kind of the same as Global War in their stats. Um, cities will bump up, or uh, do um, negative, uh, what is it, negative attack to defenders, you know, minus one. Um, and then as for the guns, now fortress guns, they get two dice, and they have a range of two, so like one, two, and like this one, since it's in this territory here, it could also fire up here. Uh, so that's the good thing about fortress guns. They can be targeted, though, so a battleship can say, I'm shooting at that fortress gun and blow it up. Then, yeah, so you can see there's two other fortress guns here, and then you've got these guns. Now, they are representing disappearing guns. They only get one dice. And they have a range of one. So basically any ships that are sitting in this sea zone here. And then for this guy, any ships sitting in this sea zone here. They get one die and they have to shoot at a coastal sea zone. Um, but the good thing about these is that they're, you know, raised up so high on that cliff that they cannot be fired at by the British ships. So if there's British ships here, they're going to have to take fire from those guns unless they capture them. Um, now, how did, did the British win the game? So, you can see there's stars marked out. The British, every time they capture a star, is another victory point. So basically their major objective is to capture either all the red star territories, either blow up all the coastal guns, so you can see that's one, two, three, or there's uh, five uh, fortress guns and then three uh, disappearing guns. So all those coastal guns would have to be destroyed, which basically either means ships blowing up the actual guns themselves, or infantry capturing the territories with the guns and thus silencing them. And the British will instantly win the game if they can capture Central Command, which is right here. So, I will get into the first turn and we'll see how this game kicks off.
All right, everybody. I think it's the round or the end of round three, and you can see that a decent amount of stuff has happened. So, the British have come in here. There is a fleet that is sitting right here that I don't have on the board, but they were able to take the Dune Port facility with their heavy equipment here, um, circumnavigating the German destroyer force here. Uh, they still have some more forces to clear out, though, but they have superiority on this island now. <clears throat> The Germans have kind of struck back because their cruiser force hung back and launched an attack against their um, their fleet, their landing fleet. So if they can take that thing out, these ships or these uh, heavy equipment are stranded here until they can the British can get their other transport to ferry their units back across. The British dropped off about five infantry on this beach just as a diversion, but they were in, they got wiped out when they launched an attack up into the the uh, highlands here. The British also just decided to come down here and dump off the all of their marines onto the port facilities on Heligoland. As you can see, they've taken them out. They hold it pretty decently well, and that is two of the fortress guns down. And over here, as I've told you before, there's only one fortress gun left, and of course they would have to silence these disappearing guns. So that may not be a good... Um, shot for them right now considering that they would have to push all the way back up there to get that last gun but what they are on a, a uh, decent track for is taking all of the red starred strategic strongholds so that's the port facility uh, I think uh, yeah and then these four city territories so we'll have to see and who knows maybe we, <clears throat> we can just push past and take out the central command base uh, the Germans as I said, for their operations, they have just moved their battleship fleet, um, kind of spread it out, getting ready to kind of take shots off at the uh, British landing forces. They still have some destroyers that the British circumnavigated, just deciding not to fight them. And, of course, their main destroyer flotilla moved up here to kind of blockade, or at least try to uh, get at some of the British battle cruisers, but we'll have to see what goes on in the next few turns. All right, everybody, it's now uh, round five, and uh, so a lot has happened in the last round, especially in the naval department. As you can see, uh, two of the biggest British fleets, they kind of separated into three sections, and two of them have been sunk now. Their cruiser force down here uh, that had a transport, and their um, destroyer force up here that also had a transport were sunk. Now, I did add uh, some more transports in for the British just so that they can pick up forces if they can in the few last few rounds. But, yeah, now those have been destroyed. The British tried to make a little counterattack with their subs to try to wipe out the Germans, but they were unable to. Um, and, yeah, right now the British have decided to group up their last remaining destroyer flotilla along with their battle cruiser force. And um, that is sitting off the... The coast here now they weren't able to lend any assistance to the forces on the ground because this uh seawall right here like i said is a cliff they can't fire past it they would have to get over here now what's hoping to happen is that the battle cruisers can say because they have a range of uh four so they could fire into this sea zone hopefully wipe out their the forces there and then move through it uh to help out the their uh ground forces next turn and hopefully ferry over some um, troops from Dune Island. Yeah, and again, like I said on the land, not much has happened except for the battle cruisers before they left. They completely bombarded the last stronghold of Dune Island, and the British were able to march in there and capture it, pretty much suppressing the island. And uh, their artillery was actually able to fire at the destroyers that were sitting here in the bay before the destroyers uh, left, which meant that they took off a couple of them. And, uh, yeah, even though this is a decent force here, this represents the last major German force. Uh, and their battleship is, you can see, sitting way far back. They decided to move back because uh, this ship um, outguns the uh, battle cruisers right now. So as long as they keep it slightly out of range, it won't be able to suffer a hit. Although they may have to send him in uh, with their last remaining destroyers as like a last time effort to try to suppress the Navy once and for all. But we'll see what happens next turn. All right, now it's the top of round seven, and as you can see, the Germans have been completely wiped out in terms of their major surface components, with only four destroyers to show for their um, their battle. 
And uh, yeah, so basically the British have secured the channel in between uh, Dune and Heligoland, which means that their transport's able to pick up their heavy equipment. Now that their battlecruiser force has just rounded the bend, they were able to take off some shots at the Germans entrenched in the city over here, and along with their marines, were able to clear out that um, part of the city. I forget which one that's called, Ohm Pass. So that leaves the British to now have to capture three more of these territories uh, to win the game. So we will see how that goes down next turn. All right, and now we're getting into the end game with round seven. Now, the British have wiped out the German Navy entirely. The Germans decide to launch one last torpedo attack against with their destroyers against the battlecruisers. The battlecruisers took them out at the loss of one battlecruiser. Uh, the British, with their regrouped navy, were able to pick up their heavy equipment on Dune Island. And as you can see, the Germans vacated the northern city to retreat into the, uh, the uh, I guess, raised plateau up here. And basically, that's mainly just because now the British can't shell their location anymore. It also provides the advantage of the British heavy equipment, such as the tank and armored car, can't actually travel up into this plain area. So, basically, the British are going to have to fight with their infantry pushing this territory here uh, with, yeah, like I said, only their infantry, and then the second round of combat, they can bring up their artillery to also fire on them. But it's going to be a really tough nut to crack, so it kind of comes down to this now. All right, I just played out the last few turns, and it looks like this game is going to end in a British victory. Now, I thought that it was a pretty tied game, I got to say that... Uh, the setups and everything were actually fairly balanced. It came down to the wire. Like, other than the one addition of this uh, extra transport, uh, everything else was pretty much unchanged from the start. But, uh, so basically, what happened in, I think I played two rounds since we were last looking at this. So basically, the British sent up two battlecruisers to here. Um, uh, Two battlecruisers to here, along with, they took their transport, about half their units, and sent them up to the second beachhead, uh, where the Germans had sent only a few reserves to defend that area. Now, what happened was the shore guns blew up their battlecruisers, but, you know, it saved the transport for later, which sent back to there. Um, but the biggest thing is that it, though the forces aren't super strong, it opened up this large second front here. So, as you can see, uh, the British Marines were able to um, launch up the beach pass and start, they basically took out two of the German shore guns on the second turn um, that were really poorly defended. As you can see, they're threatening uh, Central Command, but definitely with the forces right now that they have at disposal, they should be, Central Command is decently defended. But the biggest reason why this game has ended is because the last German shore gun um, on the map is right here, and it is uh, undefended. These guys, they were here, and in the German turn, you know, moved them over, but there's no way that they... No, no German units that could defend this territory, and the British are one turn away from marching in and blowing up their last shore gun, which uh, um, ends that last objective. Now, again, like I said, this was pretty balanced. I thought that the, uh, the Germans were going to win this, like, from a few turns ago, mainly just because of on land. Once the Germans pull back to this highland area, um, we'll just give you a better view. Once they pull back to the highlands right here, the British, their battle cruisers, no matter how much they have left, can't really, you know, influence that. They can't fire on that position. And because the British have a set amount of infantry and heavy equipment, it's not like they have, you know, unlimited resources to try to um, force the meat grinder up there. But what happened was that since the British were concentrated down here, since the British Navy was here, the Germans had moved a lot of their forces to keep this territory defended. Because as I've told you, um, these four Red Star territories, basically the city of Anna Heligoland, if they all fall, then you know the Germans lose. That's one of the objectives for the British. So you can see they've already captured two of those, um, or three of them, and if they had cracked that line right there into Hamburger, then they would move down to Sunder Street and basically wipe the city out. So the Germans had to divert some resources because the British opened up the second front, which also took forces away from here. And basically, 
once the British get a foothold, it's really hard for the Germans to then defend, you know, their three objectives, the shore guns, the central command base, and their city territories. But it was a pretty fun little quick game. I, I think it, it only took me about an hour to play this, so I definitely thought it was uh, pretty fun, and I think I'm going to release this as a file for you guys to play if you guys feel like printing it out and playing it for yourselves. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, comment down below. Consider subscribing, liking the video, and even leave a comment on what games you might want me to make in the future to release. Uh, see you guys again. Cobra, out.